Hello, everyone. Dr. Lisa Faust here with Diversify RX, and I have bona fide pharmacy royalty with me today, the workflow whisperer, Adam Robinson himself, one of my most favorite pharmacy owners on the entire planet, known him for many years, and he just gets better with age. I don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> Adam is in here, and he is the workflow whisperer. He knows a lot of things about workflow just because he made it his passion and went and dove into it. Um, he was probably one of the most popular speakers at our recent Pharmacy Profit Summit back in 2021. And I don't know, I'm going to ring see if I can wrangle him to come back for 2022. But we have a great little episode today. Um, Adam, go ahead and introduce yourself to anybody who may not be aware of your awesomeness. No, you're too kind. You're way too kind. I don't think I deserve any of that. But uh, yeah, uh, Adam Robinson, pharmacist since, man, 07. Um, been running independent pharmacy since then um, with a couple business owners. And we've we've just really, I'm, I always say I'm an oddball. Uh, if it's something different and weird, I want to try it or, you know, think outside the box. And uh, so, yeah, last year I spoke at your conference, which was amazing. That was um, and to be honest with you, I mean, it's life changing. It gave me a new perspective on pharmacy, which I'm so excited. So thank you for that. But yeah, just really uh, helping pharmacies be better at what we're doing, uh, tackling the daily struggles, uh, trying to figure that out and um, helping people do that uh, along the way. And and like I, I, we were talking just a little bit earlier, um, I'm, I'm in a revamp spot right now with workflow. So uh, trying to figure out what's the next stage is we're all growing with COVID and everything else. So uh, um, w what do we need to do to be better? So, yeah. So when we were chatting about what we were going to talk about, cause we could probably talk about a hundred different things for probably a right. hundred hours. Uh, you know, you had said something that really stuck out and I said, ah, oh, that's it. And you said, we're almost outgrowing our workflow. Now we've gotten too busy. Um, whether it's COVID related, you know, all the COVID testing has brought in all the traffic. And then of course, all those patients now start coming to you. And, um, and I said, you know what, that's it. That's the topic because I talk to pharmacy owners every day. I actually just talked to one this morning about workflow. And I think many of them think it's a one and done like, Hey, right. I got my little walkie talkies. I got a wireless thing. I got an extra oh, the walkie talkies, the walkie talkies were <laughs> the, the talk of the town. Let me tell you, if you don't have walkie talkies in your pharmacy, you're missing out. Right, you're behind. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and they think you're done. You think you're done, but that's not the case. So here we are with the workflow whisperer. Um, who just told me that he's about ready to need to revamp his workflow. So talk yeah. to me a little bit about that so that other pharmacies realize that it's, they're not doing anything wrong when they need to continually improve their workflow. Yeah. So when I really kind of put this in place uh, three or four years ago, I was very adamant that uh, with my staff, and that, that's the big piece. You have to get your staff on board that um, this is a constant fluid uh, program that you're going to be doing. And so even when I put things in place, you have to listen to the staff, you have to listen to your customers, is that really working? Uh, and you have to adjust. And that's not something that we like to do a lot of. Um, I do, I'm weird. But um, and so yeah, we, we are always constantly adjusting, you might lose staff, you might lose a good employee, and then you have to get somebody in that you have to train or, or, you know, like, like we said, COVID. Oh, now we're doing COVID testing and we're doing COVID vaccines and we're doing all this stuff. So um, how do we fit that in our daily routine? And so there's there's a lot of pieces to that that I had to I have to constantly pay attention to. So, yeah. And the thing is that pharmacy to me is a living, breathing organism. Yeah, it's absolutely. constantly growing. And yes, the COVID shift has been major. I was talking with another new pharmacy uh, or another pharmacy that's going to have a new pharmacy. And they're like, what do I do with my, with my square foot? You know, I have 1500 square feet. What do I, what do I put in my over the counter? And I said, don't forget about clinical services. Like right. to me, that right. is the future of pharmacy, whether it's COVID mm -hmm. vaccines, point of care testing, like don't fill your front end with a bunch of stuff. And right. then you can't provide any services. I know one of the things that I'm super excited about that we're going to be talking about is all the cash-based services, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's foot detox baths or having a phlebotomist come in, you know, like you just right. need space. And so all of that impacts your workflow. And so how has your staff, you know, you talked about your business increasing and you're going to have to kind of revamp. 
Are you trying to fit more people in or are you just trying to squeak out more efficiency? Or are you trying to kind of do both, like produce more and get more efficient? Yeah. So my store manager, she comes to me like all the time and she's like, hey, we need to hire more people. Everybody's busy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what we do. So let's look at the numbers. Let's uh, let's ask everybody, how are they doing? What do we need to do better? That's another thing that I don't feel like we do the best job of is asking people how the how's it going. What, what do we need to do? And so, um, yeah, figuring out a balance between all of that. You might need to hire somebody else. Oh, wait, our revenue just went through the roof because of COVID vaccines, right? Um, well, now look at your wages and, oh, I've got room to throw somebody else in here, right? So let's teach them, let's do this and, and give, them, um, give them a new place to work and uh, fit them in where you can. So I'm more of the efficient side kind of guy. I want to try to be as efficient as possible. Um, and I think I do a fairly decent job of that, but, um, uh, it's always what's next, you know, like now that, now that my employees are starting to get a little overwhelmed or maybe a couple of them had COVID or, you know, we were unfortunate. We had, we had four deaths in families last week. And so I had a bunch of employees out. Well, thank God I had an awesome sync program that I could put a bunch of stuff off on, you know? Um, and then we had to tell people we couldn't do COVID tests and we couldn't do COVID vaccine. So um, being fluid, trying to figure out just the best way to do it, you, you really have to have an open mind to do that with workflow. So, yeah. And in my approach to kind of solving when you're when you're going through that next growth phase, because there's there's hopefully always growth in your pharmacy. Right. But I like to look at the weakest link, like what is the slowest point in the process? Because right. to me, if I improve that. I'm going to get the biggest return on my investment. And, you know, right. sometimes your investment isn't even dollars. It's, it's just time. But, and oftentimes, I don't know what you have found, but to me, um, the, the inputting, the, the typing of the prescriptions, the data entry, I guess you could probably call it as the umbrella, tends to be the weakest link. At least it was always for me in my pharmacy. So yeah. I spent a lot of time adding counter spaces, adding computers, adding printers, adding fax machines, like basically setting up entire new data entry so that somebody could jump in a filler, even could go over and jump yeah. in with data entry and that kind of thing. What do you often see as kind of like your weakest link or what seems to be the holdup in, in your workflow system? Yeah. So like our rate limiting step, that's a good pharmacy chemistry term there, right? It good. is. Um, was processing. Right. So back when we started the whole workflow thing, it was it was processing because that processor was doing a lot of everything, troubleshooting, all, all this stuff. Um, and when we moved our processors away from everything, no phone calls, no nothing, um, that was not our rate limiting step anymore. So I had good technicians. I trained technicians. We, we have two processors at all times. Um, and sometimes we get away with one. And then one of those is usually training. So that is not my step anymore. My step is just the abundance of prescription fills um, and the order. So one of our big things right now is the order. Um, and I'm evaluating different ways to do the order and to efficiently do that. But, um, you know, if you figure out exactly what you said, what is holding you back and you tackle that piece, you know, workflow is not just this outlet fix workflow right? Let's fix the pharmacy. It's you have to look at each individual station, each individual employee, which can seem daunting, but just write it down, right? Like, hey, here's this, this is what's going on here. This is not so good. You know, if it's not good, um, how do I fix that? Go ask your technicians, how do we fix this piece to be a little bit faster for you guys? Um, they'll tell you, they, they yeah. usually know how to do it. Um, and then fix that piece, exactly what you said. Once that piece is done or you have an alternate station or you have a different option, then boom, that's not your, your slow piece anymore. Now go to the next slow piece. So that's exactly what we're doing right now is trying to figure that out, so. Yep. And I love the concept. And what you said is you may not do the best of it. So I'll give you, I'll get, I'll be able to give you some advice. Yeah. One of the things that I did with my employees is I played the, like, I wish game. And I would ask them, 
Like I wish, cause you know, so many times during the day, you'd be like, oh man, I wish I just had another red pen or, you know, I, yeah. I wish I had, there was a printer right here. I have to go over there for a printer. And so I played the, I wish game with the employees and they, there was always a box where they could put something in or they could freely email me, but I used to prompt them. And we had employees meeting like, I wish, and then put it down, like mm-hmm. put whatever it's that totally is. Late. I'm not saying that I can go out and get it for you right away. But there was many, many times, like I remember the one time where literally my, my technician wanted a red pen. She wanted red pens because that was her brain for her notes and her troubleshooting, right. it needed to be red. And I was like, well, by golly, I went to the office depot that was oh, right behind right. me, Thank bought her a box of red pens. And you would have thought like I raised her wages by $10 <laughs> an hour. Right. And so, but playing the I wish game with employees was so insightful for me because they're the ones that are on the front lines. Even if you're a bench pharmacist, you're not doing their job. They have a different perception and a Absolutely. different perspective. Absolutely. And so play the I wish game and compile that list together. And then I got my dopamine hits when I got to cross them all off, you know, right. like I play the, what do you want game? Yeah. Like I want, what, what do you want? You know, yep. like you seem like you're stressed. What do you want? And they'll tell you like, uh, we just put in a packaging machine and one of my texts, that's kind of running that. I was like, what, what do you, what do you need? What do you want? Man, if I had a countertop over here. Oh, okay. So it was like a $300 countertop and I fixed her. I want, and now we're way more efficient with the, that because she's got a countertop over there. So you're exactly right. If you don't ask questions, you'll never know. You yep. can't assume, and it's not even about workflow. It's everything. You can't assume what your patients want. You can't assume, uh, what the physicians want, you, you have to ask, you have to ask. Spot so. on, spot yeah. on that, that right there is gold advice um, is right. you have to ask your doctors, your patients, your employees, your everybody. wife, your and husband. Your, yeah. you got to open that community. Not your kids though. Never ask your kids. No. Yeah. Them. Yeah. They don't, they don't count. They don't count. Right. Uh, but everybody else you should ask. Um, but no, it's absolutely true. And that's how you run a business. I mean, all, frankly, I mean, that was one of the first lessons I learned. I think it was like the, how to be rich equation is ask people what they want and give it to them. Exactly <laughs> it's like right. that, that, that right there is like the solution to life is ask them what they want and give it yeah. to them. Same thing with employees. I, or I mean, with uh, patients, I remember I did a patient survey <laughs> once and I decided at the last minute to ask them about our hours, you know, what, what hours, you know, and I think we were open at the time, um, eight 30 to six 30 or something like that. And you know, everybody said they wanted us to be open till seven o'clock, you know, it was like that extra half hour. And so we changed our hours and business like boomed. It was ridiculous. You know, it's like, who would have thought a half an hour would have made (laughs) such a big difference, but it did. And so I love that concept of, of asking. And, and I think it's really important that people do get that workflow is never, you're never done unless your pharmacy is done growing, which hopefully it never is. Um, because it changes and, and your workflow might change because of employees or in circumstances. If you have Absolutely. somebody that's a whiz data entry, well, if that data entry person goes on vacation for a week, you might need two people to replace that one data oh, entry yeah. person. Absolutely. And so it is always flexible and you're never done. I, I think just get that out of your, out of your head and you'll, you'll approach workflow in a different way. And, and I think, um, you know, you alluded to in the very beginning that if it's weird and out of the box, you like to try it. And sometimes you have to try weird and out of the box things, you know, put a workstation where maybe there didn't seem logical to put one when you first opened or something. So what's kind of the weirdest thing you think you might've tried? Oh man. I don't even know what the weirdest thing is I've ever tried. Do you know, Lindsay, my my office manager's here. What's the weirdest thing I've ever tried here at the store? I don't even know. Yeah, see, I'm so weird that I see so many weird things that I've done. It doesn't, um, I mean, we do, the the pager, the walkie-talkies was the big one. I'm telling you, people, they, you would have thought the whole world was coming in when I said I was going to do walkie-talkies. They all thought I was so dumb, and now they couldn't live without them. Uh, you know, we get the little, we have the little pager system that yep. uh, restaurants use. Yep, we had that too. Um, uh, oh, i tell you a good one. One of the I don't know that it's weird or not, but on our sync program, we started telling people when to pick up, not telling them their sync date, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, that was a game changer for us because if we said, hey, your sync date is the 27th, well, they would be here on the 27th and we might not have it ready. So 
we're like, come pick it up on Thursday at four o'clock. Then that was a game changer, which is not too weird, but um, no, it yeah, is. It's I, a different mindset. It's a different shift in mindset. Well, oh, my employees we, got used to coming in and the pharmacy looking completely different. Like on, a, I'd be in the pharmacy on a Sunday doing like the books, and then mm-hmm. I'd walk out and I'd be like, "Huh, I wonder how this would work." And I would just buy myself change, like change, it. change everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting stuff in all the time, and they walk by and they're like, "What'd you order today?" And I'm like, "I don't know. We'll figure it out." But yeah, um, it, that mind shift of you know, you can be a pharmacist and the whole reason you're a pharmacist and in your mind is you're a problem solver and a giver, right? Um, and we give things away and we take care of people and their families and we do all this stuff, but sometimes it's okay to be forward, straightforward with your patients and your employees. We need to do this. And then just tell them, we have to do this in order for us to service your prescription needs safely. Oh, okay, cool. That's fine. Like they don't, it, that's, it, it's a, a mindset thing. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation, Adam. I, there's been several nuggets here that I hopefully uh, our listeners and watchers have gleaned. And uh, I think we're going to do some more of these. So yeah, uh, stay tuned. It. And I think we're going to have an Adam and Lisa series or something. Yeah, because we you, should totally got, do that. You've got some goodness in there. So thank you so much. You're and welcome. if pharmacies, I know you, you've been helping some pharmacies with mm-hmm. workflow. Um, how does somebody get a hold of you if they want some tidbits from you? Uh, probably the easiest way is just email me. That's the best. I check that dude like 24 seven. So it's just Adam at savewritedrugs.com, S-A-V-E-R-I-T-E, drugs.com. Uh, they could call the pharmacy here, 270-422-2422. Um, get a hold of me. Um, you know, I'm on Facebook. I'm on whatever. They can, they can all, pe- most pe- I don't know. People are just messaging me out of the woodwork. So <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's totally fine. That's why we're here. So yeah, um, they can get a hold of me. They can ask questions. We can, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. Cause I'm like you, Lisa, I just, I just like to help the independent where I want us all to be together and I want us all to be doing it right. Yep. And, um, there's a lot of people out there that are, are doing, they're just so overwhelmed right now. Uh, it's a weird time in our, in our existence. And, um, you know, if I can share one little nugget and it changes their day, then that's the best piece. So I, that is my too. I love that. That's what I yeah. thrive off of. So, all right, Mr. Adam, I will let you go, but we will do this again. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you, dear.